Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the R.A. McGee Correctional Training Center. This is the basic Correctional Officer Academy graduation, and graduating today is Academy Class 421. Will you please stand with us as Program Sergeant Kotko prepares the Academy for the presentation of our national anthem. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the Correctional Administrator of the R.A. McGee Correctional Training Center, John Spych. Good morning, Class 421. Good morning. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank the graduating class for their participation in this academy. I'm proud to be standing here today with all of you in honor of your hard work, dedication that you've shown in the last 13 weeks. This academy class is comprised of 221 cadets who are graduating, adding to our department's family. With that, we welcome you with open arms. When Monday, when Monday uh, comes and you enjoy this weekend of yours, and that first day begins. Remember everything you've learned. Don't be afraid to ask questions. Use your field training sergeant as a resource. Just because you are graduating and becoming a sworn peace officer today doesn't mean the learning experience ends. Take what you've demonstrated with your overall determination that you have displayed at the academy and continue that effort every day, not only in your professional life, but in your personal life as well too. Today we are joined in person by executive staff that took time away from work to share this special moment and this special day, to show their support for your hard work. Please help me in welcoming the dignitaries who are here with us today. 
Jeff McCumber, Undersecretary, Operations. <laughs> Jennifer Barreto, Undersecretary, Administration. <laughs> Connie Gibson, Director, Division of Adult Institutions. <laughs> Grady Petty, Captain, Correctional Training Center. <laughs> and Eric Flores, Lieutenant, Correctional Training Center. Also, I'd like to thank all wardens and staff throughout the state who join us via Teams today. Now, at this time, I'd like to introduce the keynote speaker. Now, it's my honor to introduce him, Jeff McCumber. In 1993, Mr. McCumber began his CDCR career as a correctional officer at Ironwood State Prison. Over the next 10 years, Mr. McCumber held roles as Associate Governmental Program Analyst and Staff Service Manager 1 at headquarters. Mr. McCumber then became the Chief of the Program Support Unit and Chief of the Transportation Unit until 2007. He then served as a Correctional Administrator at the California State Prison, Sacramento in 2008. He would go on to become the Chief Deputy Warden and ultimately the Warden from 2013 to 2016. He then transitioned to the Deputy Director of Facility Support for DAI from 2016 to 2018. In 2019, Mr. McCumber served as the Director of Corrections Services for California Correctional Health Care Services and then Undersecretary of Administration before landing in his current role as the Undersecretary of Operations since October 1st, 2020. At this time, I'd like to introduce Mr. McCumber to the stage. Good morning. Good Such an orderly group. Uh, thank you uh, for inviting me uh, to join you here today for this very important milestone. I am honored that you have chosen to begin your career with the finest correctional agency in the world. As John stated, I sat where you sat 29 years ago today. And I remember thinking, I hope the speeches are short because I have to drive to Blythe. So don't worry, I got you covered. Uh, as I look at all these fine new officers in front of me, I know that among them are future parole agents, wardens, future directors, and perhaps even a future uh, agency secretary. I want to acknowledge the families and loved ones who have supported you throughout this process. While it takes a special kind of person to wear the badge, the sacrifices and dedication of your families cannot be overstated. You're entering this career at a time like any other in our profession's history. The COVID-19 pandemic has impacted every aspect of our operations and has touched all of our lives. I am truly thankful to the brave and dedicated peace officers who continue to come to work each day. I urge you to ask them questions, to learn from them and understand the vital role you play in public safety. And down the line, when it is your turn to be the mentor, remember how important your mentors were in setting you up for success. This academy has challenged you both physically and mentally. I am confident that the skills you have gained from your training will serve you throughout your professional careers. As graduates, you have delved into a number of cutting edge training topics and skills that will better prepare you for the field. Don't forget one of the most important tools uh, in your belt, and that's communication. Whether you're responding to an incident or having a conversation with an inmate, using the right type of communication in a key moment will serve you not just in de-escalating conflict at work, but will also uh, help you in your roles as family members, community members, and role models. Each of you has learned about the CDCR mission and you're now part of an exceptional team that values public safety and the important role we have in operating safe and secure prisons. Where inmates have the opportunity to positively program. While COVID-19 has largely halted most group programming, we're working hard to get back to our core business of preparing people to return to their communities as better citizens. 
teaching them skills, knowledge, and providing them opportunity to earn professional certifications that will enable them to positively contribute to society instead of harming communities. In the coming days, you will join your fellow peace officers and non-sworn colleagues in working to ensure the operation runs effectively, smoothly, and under today's challenging conditions. Your careers are just beginning, but know that each of you plays a vital role in public safety. As do all CDCR employees, we recognize and value the work you do to keep our institutions safe for all within their walls, whether they live or work there. As you progress through your careers, you will at times face stressful situations. I urge you to take care of yourselves and your families by taking advantage of CDCR's many Office of Employee Wellness resources. Our future success is dependent upon your disciplined respect and commitment to excellence and to one another. In conclusion, it gives me tremendous pleasure to welcome you to the CDCR family. I am honored and humbled to celebrate this important day with you. I look forward to learning about your hard work and accomplishments in the near future. And I look forward to learning more about your contributions to our department's public safety mission. Everyone, please join me in acknowledging today's graduating class. Congratulations. Thank you, Mr. McCumber. In order for our mission to be successful, it requires hard work from an entire team. I'd like to thank the entire Correctional Training Center composed of the culinary staff, janitorial, plan ops, budgets, warehouse, personnel, curriculum development, information technology, the canteen, and all academy instructors. I would like to thank the Office of Peace Officer Selection and the Commission on Correctional Peace Officer Standards and Training for their collaboration and partnership. I also want to give my gratitude to the Division of Adult Institutions and my chain of command for their overall support for the Correctional Training Center. At this time, I'd like to introduce and acknowledge the company commanders who played such a crucial role for this academy class. Mike Company, Sergeant Holmes. November Company, Sergeant Turner. Oscar Company, Sergeant Keeler. Papa Company, Sergeant Benavides. Quebec Company, Sergeant Terragawa. Romeo Company, Sergeant De Leon. And Sierra Company, Sergeant Brevik. Additionally, I'd like to recognize the program staff, Lieutenant Flores and Sergeants Fusi, Kako, and Salma for their dedication and hard work for this graduating class. Now at this time, I'd like to invite Captain Grady Petty to the podium to continue with the Code of Ethics and Administer of the Oath. Good morning. morning. To Academy Class 421, today I hope you feel a sense of accomplishment. Your hard work has paid off. You have joined a diverse and evolving department which is tasked with managing an equally diverse and evolving offender population. As a correctional officer, you will play a pivotal role in the safe and secure operation of our state's correctional facilities. It will be your responsibility for maintaining a safe environment for staff and offenders while assisting in the rehabilitative process. At times, these responsibilities can seem overwhelming, and it's in these times your resolve and character will be tested. However, I am confident that you have been well-trained and are willing to meet the challenges after today, you will be part of something bigger than yourself. You will be a member of the law enforcement community and the CDCR family. 
Congratulations, Class 421. Job well done. <laughs> Sergeant Kako, please prepare the cadets for the reading of the Code of Ethics and the administering of the oath. As a law enforcement officer, my fundamental duty is to serve the community, to safeguard lives and property, to protect the innocent against deception, the weak against oppression or intimidation, and the peaceful against violence or disorder, and to respect the constitutional rights of all people to liberty, equality, and justice. I will keep my public and private life unsullied as an example to all and will behave in a manner that does not bring discredit to me or my agency. I will maintain courageous calm in the face of danger, scorn, or ridicule, develop self-restraint, and be constantly mindful of the welfare of others, honest in thought and deed in both my personal and official life. I will be exemplary in obeying the law and the regulations of my department. I will never act officiously or permit personal feelings, prejudices, political beliefs, aspirations, animosities, organizational associations, or friendships to influence my decisions. With no compromise for crime and with relentless prosecution of criminals, I will enforce the law courteously and appropriately without fear or favor, malice or ill will, never employing unnecessary force or violence, and never accepting gratuities. Confidential information received in my official capacity shall remain undisclosed unless disclosure is necessary in the performance of my duty. I will never engage in acts of corruption, bribery, insubordination, or the obstruction of justice, nor will I condone such acts by other peace officers. I will immediately report acts of misconduct by staff of my agency and cooperate with all legally authorized agencies and their representatives in the pursuit of justice. I know that I alone am responsible for my own standard of professional performance and will take every reasonable opportunity to enhance and improve my level of knowledge and competence. Class 421, raise your right hand and repeat after me. I, state your name. I, recognize the badge of my office, the badge of my office. As, a of as a symbol of public faith, and I accept it as a public trust, and I accept it as a public trust. to be held so long as I am serving. As a, law as a law enforcement officer, I will constantly strive to achieve, to achieve these, objectives and ideals, these objectives and ideals included in the Law Enforcement Code of Ethics, in the law code of ethics. dedicating myself before all present, myself before all present. to my chosen profession, to my chosen profession. law enforcement. Congratulations, Class 421. <laughs> I'd like to thank our keynote uh, speaker, Undersecretary Under McCumber, and all the uh, dignitaries for attending today. Sergeant Kako. Please prepare the correctional officers for dismissal.